Do you really have to sacrifice performance, fan noise, and battery life by going with the 14 inch 16 core M3 Max MacBook Pro instead of the 16 inch model with exactly the same specs? Well, I'm gonna answer that in this video by doing a ton of performance, benchmark, and thermal throttle testing, as well as battery life, because both of these machines are at 100% battery life in high power mode. So let me unplug these chargers, and by the end of my filming, I'm gonna show you guys the differences in battery life. And before I get into all the real world performance testing, one thing we have to do is flip these over and do a teardown to look at the thermal system differences. But I do wanna test one other thing first. And and that is of course the speakers. I'm doing a different song because you guys keep complaining about our other ones. So let's see if there's any differences in speaker quality. And yep, just as I thought, there is more bass on the 16 inch, and that's probably because the speaker enclosures on the inside are probably a little bit bigger. So let's actually find out by tearing these down. By the way, guys, I just flipped these over, and one thing you can instantly tell is the difference in thickness. The 16 inch is quite a bit thicker, so you can probably expect to have a bigger thermal system. And as I'm taking off these screws, I wonder if you guys can see the fingerprints on this space black, which by the way, absolutely beautiful and moment of truth we got the 16 inch and we got the 14 inch and holy smokes guys wow are you guys seeing how big the fans are on the 16 inch look at the size of this fan compared to the 14 and not only that look at these heat fins right here where the fan ends compared to the size of that. Look how much longer that is. Not only that, it's even bigger. The heat pipes themselves are thicker all the way around, but as far as the actual heat sink for the M3 Max chip, they look exactly the same. No differences here. And right here, you can see the difference in speakers. And then of course, we have the battery size, 72.6 watt hours on the 14 inch compared to 99.6. So this should give it a lot of extra battery life. We're gonna find out at the end of this video. And now let's get into performance. The first thing I wanna do is do a quick SSD speed test, just in case there might be any differences at all. And so far, it looks to be basically neck and neck. And just for good measure, we have Geekbench 6 right here, 48 gigs of RAM on each. They both clock up to 4.05 with high power mode. And just as expected, we have no difference in the single core or the multi-core performance. And same for the 40 core GPU, exactly the same within a margin of error. And also the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Unlimited test, 188 FPS. No differences there because we're not thermal throttling or anything. And now let's jump into something that will have some thermal throttling. This is Cinebench 2024. This is gonna be the 10 minute stress test. But first, I've gotta show you the coolest power bank I've ever seen, the Shar Geek 100 from our sponsor, Charge, with its awesome transparent design and a huge 25,600 milliamp hours of battery, which is airline safe. It puts out 100 watts of power, which is enough to fast charge three devices at once with multi-device compatibility, like charge your iPhone 15 Pro and M3 MacBook at the same time. It's also got a smart IPS display which shows you the wattage info and the remaining battery life while coming with a 75 watt adjustable DC input and output or a 100 watt USB-C input for a full recharge in just 90 minutes. It's currently 31% off for their Black Friday sale until November 27th, so order today using the link in the description below. All right guys, already we're hitting 102 degrees Celsius on the 14 inch and it looks like the 16 is right behind it right off the bat guys this is crazy because we're at the same 102 degrees Celsius peak on both of them but the fans are running a lot faster around 4,000 rpm average and wow look at that guys the package power is so much higher on the 16 inch 52 watts compared to 36 this 14 inch is seemingly throttling already. 3.13 p-core clock speed compared to 3.58, which is probably its max. Wow, just look at this, it's relatively flat, 
The 14 inch is throttling. Look how it's going down towards three gigahertz. And the really surprising thing to me is that usually Apple has a limit of 108 degrees Celsius, but this is stuck at 102 and it's not allowing more power almost like it's forcing this 14 inch to be limited down to 102 degrees Celsius, not up to 108 like we expected, and it's seriously throttling the performance. All right, it's been over five minutes in the stress test, and I wanna show you guys the temps. Right here we have the 14 inch right where the chip is at, we have 43 degrees Celsius, and then from the fans we have about 44 degrees Celsius output, so it's pretty efficiently getting rid of heat, but why is it throttling? Well, let's look at the 16 inch. Whoa, 34 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Celsius on the chip and 38 degrees right there in the hinge. Holy moly, the 16 inch is keeping it so cool. Wow, about, what is that, eight degrees higher on the 14 inch chip. And wait a minute guys, I did not expect this. The fans on the 16 inch actually slowed down to about half the speed. So I am now hearing the 14 inch like crazy. It is still at 100% fan speed, maxing out and it's loud and noisy. There you go, the test is finished. The fans are still running on this thing to cool it down. And we can confirm that yes, the 14 inch does sacrifice performance. We have 1,510 points on the 14 inch and 1,607 on the 16 inch. That's 6.4% faster on the 16 inch with the same exact specs. Nothing is different except for the size. And once again, I do wanna remind you that the fans slowed down and got quieter on the 16 inch. They were full blast, very noisy on the 14 the entire time. All right, now with that said, I actually wanna test the GPU benchmark within Cinebench 2024 because it has been quite nice to test and I believe it does support ray tracing. Right off the bat, I'm seeing that both machines basically peak at around 30 watts for GPU differences. So no thermal throttling on the 14 inch in terms of the actual wattage and wow look at that guys the 14 inch is now maxing out its fans very very noisy almost at idle on the 16 inch this is very important to understand because if you're planning to play AAA games or high-end games and you're gonna get the 14 inch you're gonna hear those fans all the time this thing silent gamers you gotta get the 16 inch with the full M3 Max. Wait a minute, guys. I think the 14 inch is throttling on the chassis. If you look close at this chart, you can see how high the wattage spiked in red for the GPU in the beginning, but look right here. It is now throttling. The 14 inch is throttling the power. Look how low it is compared to the beginning spikes. On the 16 inch, completely flat. The red spikes are completely flat all the way through, no throttling at all. Once again, it's been about five minutes in this test. Let's whip out the thermal cam. Dang, look at that heat spot, 45 degrees Celsius. Holy smokes, that is hot on the 14 inch. That's probably what's throttling it because the temp itself is 83 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Celsius. So it's not the chip, the chassis is throttling, 45 degrees Celsius. Over on the 16 inch, we have 44 degrees Celsius. Wow, it's actually heat soaking as well, but just slightly less. And wow, impressive. Surprisingly, they're basically the same score, probably within margin of error, around 13,000 points. So even though we saw the wattage kick down, basically no impact on performance. Not bad. The fans on this thing are still ramping down. Let's get into some real world testing, starting with Xcode programming to see if there's any difference at all. And wow, we actually have a difference. I didn't expect this. 72.5 seconds on the 16 inch, 82.5 seconds on the 14 inch, 10 seconds slower, and the fans were still kicked up trying to keep it cool, which is just so weird. I did not expect a 10 second difference in Xcode. And now let's finish off with perhaps the hardest thing of all. This is gonna be video editing in Final Cut Pro playing Canon R5 footage. And this is 8K at 24 FPS, so I'm gonna play both of these back and look at the performance. 
Right away we can see the temps kick up, we can see that it's using about 85 to 87% of the GPU and about 60, 67% of the CPU. And surprisingly guys, the 14 inch is stuttering more than the 16 inch. Can you see that? Look at that, we're getting up to 62 watts of package power, 60 watts compared to 40 watts. That's 50% more wattage going to the 16 inch, likely because this 14 is throttling. And looking at the performance core power, 3.5 gigahertz clock speed under three on the 14 inch. Same thing for the GPU wattage, 22 on the 16 inch, only 14, 15, 13 on the 14 inch. The GPU is throttling. And once again, just looking at these side by side, the 16 inch playback is by a long shot smoother than the 14 inch. So much stuttering. This is an excellent playback test going to the extreme where we're not using encoders, using CPU and GPU, the 16 inch is just killing it. And for our final test, we're actually gonna export this and see which one finishes first. And wow guys, we have our scores. The 16 inch M3 Max took four minutes and 44 seconds, while the 14 inch took six minutes and 36 seconds. That's a minute and 52 seconds longer. And these are the same exact specs for these chips. Wow, that is a massive difference. And yes, it confirms a lot of thermal throttling on the 14 inch. So there you go, that was all of our thermal testing. And the last thing to do is check up on the battery life. 14 inch first, we have 22%, 14 inch M3 Max, and on the 16, 42%. That is a lot of extra battery life. And keep in mind guys that this 16 inch display is larger, which has more screen real estate and takes up more power. Not only that, but it's a 3.5K resolution display compared to 3K. So it's pushing more pixels across a bigger size at 600 nits on both of these. And still we have a lot more battery life on the 16 inch. So with all of that tested, which one should you buy? Well, I could only think of one good reason to buy the 14 inch over the 16, and that is if you absolutely must have the extra portability and you don't care about what you have to sacrifice to get it. Portability is all, you don't care about the extra fan noise, the worst battery life, the worst performance in some of these cases. That's the only reason why you should buy the 14 inch. But for the 16, we had lower fan noise overall, less of the time we had the fans running. It was quieter, more silent, it ran cooler. You get much better battery life, you get the bigger screen real estate, which is better for watching movies and multitasking, you get the better speakers, and you get better performance. I've gotta say guys, just buy the 16 inch MacBook Pro if you don't care about the portability. I would recommend it, especially if you're a gamer that's gonna be playing games, you're not gonna be having to deal with that fan noise because this thing can keep it cool with the better thermal system. So with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, check out one of those videos right there. Subscribe above for more tests like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.